headed over to Hague Road again. Um, we'll start from the terminus of the, well, we're on the Midland Trace Trail again. We're gonna start from the terminus there at Hague Road and head over to hopefully Potter's Bridge in Noblesville. It's on a route that I've never taken. I've inputted a route into Osmond. I kind of doubt you guys can see it. But we'll see. day to day. It's in the mid 50s and the wind's about four miles an hour. I'm on your left. I'm on your left. Potter's Bridge is about 10 miles. So it'll be a round trip of 20. But we'll see because it's kind of late in the day and I'm not sure I want to be in rush hour traffic. But if we don't do that today, we'll definitely do it tomorrow. That front brake's a little uh, noisy today. When I cleaned up the bike from the snow the other day, I ended up taking the uh, caliper off to see what, what was making that noise on the uh, Morris Reservoir loop when I stopped and checked it out. I didn't see anything wrong. And the brake pads, they look like they have plenty of pad left.
on your left. on your left. use the throttle for a bit. I'm not sure how many of you watch other channels that might talk about the recent news for e-bikes, but uh, last week there was a bad accident in Key Biscayne, Florida, Key Biscayne, where a 60 plus year old woman had died from an accident with a 12 year old on an e-bike. Um, the woman was riding a regular acoustic bicycle. I'm on your left, guys. And the uh, child that was 12 years old was on an e-bike. I couldn't find any news about what happened particularly, but they had collided and the woman passed away, sadly. So the uh, city government of Key Biscayne decided to ban all e-bikes in their small town for an emergency ban of 60 days. And then the city was going to decide what kind of legislature they're going to pass or city code moreover in regards to e-bike usage. Now, although I would like to think that they didn't need a legislation towards it, looking back in their uh, city comments and things on Instagram, and then also looking at some old podcasts of an interview with their police chief, it sounds like they've had a serious issue with particularly children on uh, e-bikes. And it sounds like a lot of them are on bikes that go well over 20 or even 20 miles an hour. And they just zip around and what have you. So they don't necessarily have the mental faculties to understand what is safe and what's not, I guess. Mental faculties, obviously they do. So guess repercussions moreover. 
So definitely in that area, they do need some sort of regulations. Um, whether that's going to affect adults riding them or people that have mobility issues, I don't know. But having an issue for well over a year dealing with kids and stuff. Hello. It's probably time they implemented something. Hello. And looking at their tourism numbers, they have well over a million people visiting a year. So you obviously don't want to have collisions with people. But I wasn't sure how many of you knew about that or not. It is pretty sad that it happened. I don't know if it was a factor, but the woman that died, she was not wearing a helmet, but the child was. Um, I just can't stress enough how important it is to wear a helmet. I mean, if you choose not to, that's fine. But head injuries are no joke. Whether you fall at three miles an hour, five miles an hour, or 20 miles an hour, a head injury is serious. When I ride my motorcycle, I always wear a helmet. Just a great proportion of accidents where people die is because of a head injury. So, please do. But, again, if you don't, that's on you. Ride your ride and don't judge anybody else, I guess. Unfortunately, with that crossing signal, that makes that really dangerous for people to stop. I know, I've said that before in other videos. to get in a long ride um, I kind of laid out I don't know if you can see that little red line but I kind of laid out a trip to go over to Potter's Bridge again tomorrow if we make it today but to go up there and then around and connect with the nickel plate trail which I don't know if it's connected all the way from Noblesville but it travels it's supposed to travel from Noblesville on down to 96th Street and Fishers so that'd be a nice ride eventually I believe it's supposed to go down to the Indiana State Fairgrounds so that'll be a pretty long ride and it'd be very cool if they connected that with uh, thank you if they would connect that with the Monon Trail by some means but that would be a huge loop 
well over 50 or 60 miles. talked about the uh, woman dying. There is several, or quite a bit of legislation trying to be passed in New Jersey. They're working on some kind of legislation. I can't remember what, whether it's to restrict access for e-bikes or require permits and insurance. I'm not sure. There's also legislation trying to be worked through in California. New York put through a bunch of legislation regarding batteries, their usage and, and creation. Well, creation of the bicycle battery, not the cells. And then also New York um, is recommending that and may restrict purchasing completely for bike motors, probably the controllers and the batteries to all have UL certification. So in the future, it may be important for anybody that doesn't have an e-bike to verify that they do have UL certified batteries and controllers and motors. Hopefully the manufacturers won't fudge a little bit and say that they are UL certified, but you never know. course they've dealt with quite a few batteries exploding or catching fire I don't remember the channel I was watching but the guy gave a good recommendation on batteries was once you go on a long trip or you've been out using the, the motor quite a bit let the battery rest for a bit before you just go and plug it in it should help it cool off not just overactively charge. use that cruise control. I guess that's for another day.